Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Ball. Thank you for being with us. This segment is brought to you by Barnes Creative Studios. Look, if you need any type of commercial real estate video, check them out, especially if you have a hotel resort. It's really awesome to see what they do. Uh, learn more and see what they do. Go to BarnesCreativeStudios.com. Well, today we're going to talk about something that uh, I think we're all or deal with all the time, right? Restaurants. How's the restaurant industry uh, going? There's been uh, you know, a lot of changes with uh, you know coming out of COVID. What happened then, and how are uh, restaurants uh, expanding? Who's doing well? Who's not? Uh, so we have an expert. Please welcome Darren Tristano. He's CEO of Food Service Results. Darren, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, if you could just kind of let us know overall when you kind of look at the restaurant industry in the U.S. How are they doing? Well, it's really a tale of two segments. I think we'll start with the positive, the limited service segment, which is represented by fast food, fast casual restaurants has performed very well through the pandemic because the majority of their food is taken off site and consumed away from the restaurant, either through delivery, through drive-through or through takeout. Um, they have performed extremely well. Demand has been high. And because these restaurants have been less, uh, less really involved with some of these regulations, they've performed compared to the full service segment, which clearly has been uh, decimated by some of the restrictions in occupancy, labor issues, and the ability of these restaurants to actually serve food within the restaurant. So full service restaurants like Applebee's, Chili's, TGI Fridays have struggled through the pandemic and have very, very low performance, um, starting to improve, but certainly not like what we saw a couple of years ago. Yeah, and that's interesting. Here we are, it's uh, kind of the first of May here, 2022. And uh, that that's one thing I was curious about, all of those full service restaurants starting to, uh, to improve. It seems like a lot of people want to get out and they want to do things. Sure. I, I think the first part of what's happening today is that you have consumer habits, which have developed through the drive through, through taking out and through delivery and eating at home. And these habits are going to have to start to shift back toward restaurants where we're actually going in for an experience not just getting food and leaving. So I think there is pent up demand from consumers to go back to fine dining restaurants, to full service restaurants where they can enjoy a good meal, have servers take care of them, enjoy an adult beverage. And certainly that pent up demand will drive most American consumers, consumers, especially during these warmer summer months when you know, we've been cooped up for the winter, we want to get out. So I would expect restaurants, especially those that have outdoor seating, uh, which really grew during this pandemic, will start to get these customers back in through the doors and traffic will drive these restaurants to perform much better this year than we've seen over the past two years. So your outlook is uh, positive then? Well, I think the outlook has to be positive compared to last year. I think when we take a look at sales, we have to be cautious because we've seen so much food inflation and labor cost inflation that prices are going to go up. And certainly that's going to drive better sales for restaurants, but because the costs are so much higher, it will translate into uh, smaller margins considerably. But in general, we want to see greater traffic and frequency going to these full service restaurants and the industry in general to really see greater recovery, not just higher prices driving larger sales. What are some of the uh, sample margins, uh, Darren, that you see in some of these uh, restaurants, maybe, you know, in 2019 and then and then maybe today? Well, the old rule was five percent was the general margin a nickel for every dollar you sell mm -hmm. and unfortunately that is still a general rule for those restaurants that are doing well driving 10 15 even 20 percent margins these would be very busy very successful 
fine dining, independent restaurants, and some chains uh, that are clearly being driven by guest loyalty. But for each one of those restaurants, we have a struggling restaurant that's getting less than 5%. And a lot of these only survive because they're mom and pop shops that can actually handle better labor because they're family run. And if the money's not there, they can get by till the next check. So I think what we're going to see overall is that these restaurants are still going to perform at about a 5% margin. Uh, some restaurants doing better, certainly limited service with higher volumes outside the restaurant. Uh, the full service restaurants still going to continue to struggle as they get back to a higher occupancy rates. Remember, these are big restaurants with large dining rooms where in many cases they can't even get the labor to manage the guest traffic. So sometimes you'll see a line and there'll be open tables. It's because labor is still a huge issue for the industry. Yeah, and that's interesting you bring up because I, I've seen that as well where you go in and there, there's a long wait for a restaurant, but well, it's not full. Yeah, it's because we can't hire people. Can't find people to work. Yeah. It's crazy. Now, another thing I want to ask you about, Darren, it's a lot of real estate investors and owners of properties are uh, listening to this show and watch it uh, and all of us who support them and help them. And one of the things that I was driving down through uh, Georgia, Florida, uh, showing some uh, properties in Florida, and uh, just about every quick service restaurant that I pulled near, uh, their dining rooms were shut down. I mean, people were actually going to the door and couldn't get in, uh, and only the drive through was available. And now this is in Florida. Think about it. You know, some people jokingly say that they didn't even participate in COVID shutdowns, right? Uh, obviously they did, but you know, to see these still closed, and this was about two weeks ago. So I'm like, what is going on here? Are some of these uh, quick service restaurants, are they going to really change their model to more uh, drive through and less dining inside dining? Well, let's start with the trend. The, the trend over the past 10 years have been, has been to off premise dining. And it's really been driven by a younger generation that we would consider uh, Gen Z is the on the go consumer. So they're not the consumer that's going into the restaurant to have a meal. These are consumers that want to purchase restaurant quality. They're willing to pay for it, but they want to consume it away from the restaurant. So because of that, we have now seen a lot more of these to-go stations developed inside of the four walls of the restaurant, certainly drive-throughs for restaurants that, that really weren't drive-throughs uh, that are now offering them and pickup windows that are available. So when we're seeing these restaurants close their doors, but remain open through the drive-through, mainly it's because the labor isn't available to be able to put in enough people to service the dining room, to clean the dining room, uh, and certainly to clean the bathrooms frequently. So because of the labor shortage, it is easier for restaurants to manage through the drive through It's a little bit longer of a line, um, but really what they're missing are the senior citizens coming in for bottomless coffee and a lot of the family diners that are coming in to eat and have a meal together, which are gonna basically go through the drive through pick it up, and go home to eat. So some of what I saw then was not because of customer traffic, not wanting to eat in the dining rooms. It was really the, the, getting the employees. It, it is. And I think what COVID has taught us with a lot of these dining rooms being closed was that the margins are better for limited service restaurants because they can manage with less labor. And with $15 an hour minimum wage, it, it really pays off. So I think these restaurants have learned from this pandemic and they've shifted to be able to serve through the drive through primarily. And if the labor gets better, I do believe that we'll see these restaurants reopening. Uh, the other thing with this trend is that we are now starting to see drive through only restaurants. KFC, Chick-fil-A, others have developed prototypes where they're not going to have anything other than a door where someone comes out to hand you food and double, triple, even quadruple drive throughs that really push traffic and throughput through the restaurants, uh, but allow people the convenience of not having to stop, get out of the car. And for 
mothers with children or people who have disabilities, this is going to be beneficial. What might that mean, Darren, for renewals on these leases when these uh, companies have a renewal coming up and they have a, a big dining room and one drive through? Well, I think a lot of these restaurants are going to have to figure out how to use those dining rooms. And in some cases, they are converting them into banquet rooms or takeout areas that are dedicated and even expanding the kitchen so that they can produce more food, which can be brought off premise and not just serving on premise. So what, what happened during the pandemic is that a lot of full service restaurants shifted to a model of pickup or delivery, whether it was self-delivered or third party delivered. And I think what will happen with these larger platforms is to justify the square footage, they have to find ways to focus on the off-premise logistics to be able to produce more food. Um, you're going to see a lot more land leases because uh, drive throughs are gonna be important. So that will be a shift, but the idea here is to lock them in, get them in for as long a term as you can, and hope that we see recovery back to full service dining and dining occasions. We're talking with Darren Tristano, CEO of Food Service Results, uh, about the restaurant industry. And, and Darren, what are some of the categories or brands that uh, you see expanding out there right now? Well, right now, I still think we see fast casual restaurants are doing very well. We're starting to, to see it slow down in the burger and even the chicken and the sandwich segment and, and Mexican, but we're still seeing it in the very specialized groups like barbecue, uh, pokey continues to find new opportunities to open in some markets. So Greek is doing very well and very healthy focused food. And although the demand for healthy food is continuing to grow, it's not growing at such a fast pace that we're seeing a lot of new restaurants opening. So some of these fast casual segments are maturing over time. And you can see that with the sandwich segment. You have Jimmy John's, Jersey Mike's, and Firehouse Subs, among others. Well, these restaurants have slowed down. They're starting to see less growth on a unit basis. Uh, and certainly with Subway closing a number of their stores, there are opportunities for these sandwich shops to grow, but unfortunately it's coming at the cannibalization of what's happening with Subway closing thousands of their restaurants. On the full service side, I still think you're seeing wine bars and alcohol related restaurants continuing to trend. Higher quality restaurants, not necessarily the, the upper echelon like the Morton's and the Ruth Chris, but restaurants that offer a variety of food um, different types of ethnic cuisines are still trending and independent restaurants continue to perform well compared to the chains because quite frankly, as consumers are looking for specific experiences, they really do like the independent feel and the mom and pop shops a little bit better than the chains and have gravitated back towards supporting local and continuing to support these restaurant tours in their marketplace. And I, I don't want to let you go until I can get a tip from you for uh, restaurant owners, business operators, and then also for uh, a landlord. So what would you say to restaurant owners as a tip to think about uh, where you are today? Well, I think for restaurant owners, they really have to focus on retention and labor. I think it is so difficult to find good staff that the best opportunity an operator has is to take care of, to train, to promote, and to incentivize existing staff to grow within the restaurant, to learn and to stay on board. Because just trying to find people, then having to train them, uh, not only can be expensive, but it will have a direct effect on your customer whose satisfaction is going to be in jeopardy if you're not able to get an order right or provide good service and even know the menu of the restaurant. So I think from an operator point of view, I think it's gonna be important to retain good people, pay them what, what you need to, and, and really push through this economy until we start to see brighter things on the horizon. Yeah, that's a good point, good tip. I, I know when I'm in a restaurant, almost any business, it's really, how are you treated? Do they, do they appreciate you there, right? Do they take care of you? And it really means a lot. 
What about a tip for uh, landlords who are leasing to uh, restaurants right now? Well, I think landlords really need to look at the restaurant that is coming into your space. I, I think that there are chains that are doing well that are looking to expand outside of their existing markets. And they don't because they aren't really well known within that marketplace. They don't necessarily get the type of attention that they should. Uh, I work with a group called Cousin Subs. They're based in Wisconsin, where most of their 100 restaurants are located. And as they move into Indiana and other parts of the country, they're running up against landlords who don't know the brand as well and maybe aren't investing in them when in fact they are a growth chain and they are moving in the right direction. So I think as, an, as a landlord, take a look at these restaurants and see, are you growing? Are you building in this marketplace? And are you a better investment for us than somebody else in this market? And I think that's going to be important. Yeah, I have a real good spot for a uh, sub sandwich place in Lilburn, uh, suburb of uh, Atlanta. Uh, that actually could have a drive through as well, which uh, kind of be interesting, I think. Sure. Well, Darren, what would you leave our audience with to think about for restaurants moving forward in general? Well, I think it's important to go out to enjoy restaurants today, continue to shift your behaviors from having food delivered to going out and actually enjoying the experience. I think that's going to support not only the local operators and owners, but the staff. And, and certainly um, that's going to be helpful to, to keep our industry moving. Um, we can certainly eat out of our freezer and frozen pizza, but you know, going out and having that experience, I think is going to support the industry and, and support people in general. And, and as consumers, I think that's what's important. All right. Well, Darren, thanks for being on the show. If you'd like to have more information, uh, check them out. It's foodserviceresults.com. Thank, thank you for being with us. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Buxton. Take leasing site selection and due diligence to the next level. Make the right decisions with on-demand mobile data. Visit BuxtonCo.com. By Bull Realty. For proven commercial real estate asset and occupancy solutions, contact me. My email is Michael at BullRealty.com. By Commercial Agent Success. Expert level commercial real estate broker training. Cloud Access 1 up to 21 one-hour videos. Visit Commercial Agent Success. Dot com. Thank you for reviewing, subscribing, and sharing America's commercial real estate show.